Hi, I'm Brad with the IHSA. When we look at hoisting and rigging operations on construction projects, there's a large number of factors that go into making a successful and safe lift when you're using a crane or other hoisting device. One of the key factors that we want to look at is the capacity of the crane and how that's affected by various factors on a project. We want to make sure that all of these are assessed ahead of time before we actually proceed with any lifting operations. One of the main factors involved in judging the capacity of your crane over distance has to do with the boom angle and the radius that the distance of the load is from the crane. So on a crane with a boom, as the boom lowers, the capacity of the crane is going to decrease. At the same time, the load is moving further away from the crane, which is also decreasing its capacity. Now, the further away we get and the lower the boom angle, the capacity of the crane's lifting capabilities decreases very, very rapidly. So if we have a large 90-ton crane that under perfect factory conditions could lift 90 tons in close and really tight, the further we get away, that capacity drops very, very, very quickly. Now we want to make sure that we discuss with the operator before any lift where we're going to be placing it, how heavy the object is, and the distance away from the crane. This will allow the operator to take a look at their lift charts inside the crane to ensure that they have the capacity to make that lift over distance. Now we would never want to lift beyond the capacity of the load charts. Realistically, we typically don't want to lift all the way to the capacity of the load charts because the load charts, again, are set under factory conditions in perfect environments, and we know the construction sites are anything but perfect factory conditions. One of the other factors that's involved in the crane capacity is the setup of the outriggers. Now whether we're using a rough terrain crane or perhaps a telehandler, the outriggers have to be set up properly. Now certain vehicles can lift loads on rubber tires without outriggers set up. Some can set up halfway and others have to be fully extended. To get full capacity on the crane, they're going to need to be fully extended. But if we have to short rig on one side, we have to refer to the load chart and the operators manual to make sure that we have the capacity to lift in that position. We always want to communicate with our operators to discuss these. Another factor is where we're operating and where we're making the lift in relation to the crane. We call this the quadrant of operation. Now depending on the style of crane that you're using on your project, lifting over the sides might have a reduced capacity as opposed to lifting over the front or the back. So we have to again verify with our operators and our load charts to make sure that the crane has the capacity that we need to be using. Some other factors include boom deflection. This is where you pick up a heavy load and the boom slightly flexes or bends a little bit under the weight of the load. What this does is actually increase the radius which is going to decrease the capacity of the crane. We also want to make sure that we're not doing any side loading or pulling with the crane because again this is going to be adding force to the load in a direction that's not proper for lifting. So this is going to then reduce the capacity that we're able to lift and it makes the object heavier than we expect it to be. We also want to control for rapid movement of the crane. We don't want to be swinging too quickly or having jerky movements while accelerating or decelerating. Because what happens in this case is we begin adding additional forces to the load and therefore start making the object heavier than it needs to be because of the forces acting on it. This of course comes into direct play with shock loading or impact loading. We never want the load to drop or bounce because just falling only a small distance could even double the weight of the load as it falls and then gets caught again by the rigging. Now of course we also want to take into account things like the weather. Wind conditions can add forces on the object that's being lifted. So as the wind pushes it, it puts further stress on the rigging and the crane. So this then reduces the capacity of the weight of the object that we can actually lift. Things like wet and icy conditions can add additional weight and stress on the rigging, the load and the crane itself. Now this wasn't a comprehensive list of all the factors that affect crane capacity, but it gives you a good starting point to understand some of the things that are involved when making a lift. Now it's very, very important that all operators, signalers, riggers, and supervisors understand these and all the other factors involved in rigging and hoisting to make sure that the lift gets to where it's going safely and without any issues. 
Thank you for watching this video on crane capacity. Please visit our website at www.ihsa.ca and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more safety talk.